Hello and welcome to Horrific Tales. In this show we celebrate the creations of independent authors and aspiring writers. Please like and subscribe and share these episodes to help our talented friends get as much exposure as possible. We would also appreciate if you could support our artists by following them on their individual platforms and by purchasing their works. Details on how to do this are in the episode description. In this horrific tale, a man about town happens to chance upon the woman of his dreams, leading to a strange ritual of love and horror. Join us now as we present Strangers in the Night by Gary Batchelor. I can barely contain my friends in excitement. I love Friday nights. It's time to party. Let your hair down. Allow your inhibitions free reign. Leave the humdrum world of the week behind. What is a weekend for, if not for that? I pimp and preen myself in front of the mirror, making sure everything is just so. As I work like a slave during the week, it's now time for me to gird my loins and prepare myself for the coming night's stimulation. After I think I'm done, I double check. I twist and turn, pirouetting, viewing my reflection with some pride at how well I've scrubbed up. Earlier, I'd taken an age to choose what colour, what outfit I was going to wear tonight. I've got so very bored with the virginal white, although it does have its advantages. But tonight, I feel I need to break away from the mundane monochrome, so I did through my extensive wardrobe with something more exotic. Maybe in blue, or red, or orange. Well, maybe not orange. I eventually choose a dark blue. Not exactly navy, a tad darker than that. It wasn't a colour I'd worn often before, but I must say, it did suit me. Checking the time, I discover that I'm still ridiculously early. There's no need to rush. I decide, that being the case, that I would put a little music on, get myself in the mood. I sort through the LPs and find what I'm looking for. Placing the vinyl carefully on the turntable, I lower the stylus. As the music starts, I begin to waltz around the room, holding an imaginary partner, losing myself, albeit briefly, in the moments. I mouth the words all through the song, never allowing myself to impose my puny voice over Frank's melodious tones. All too quickly it is over, and I lift the stylus from the record and turn the stereo off. I know that I'll have that song in my head all night long, as I sing and dance and lose myself in a wild romance. I make a last check that I have remembered everything I need to take with me, and follow that up by taking the last look around to make sure I have everything in place for my return. My anticipation rises as I shut and lock the door behind me and step out into the Friday night darkness. Everything is still and quiet, and I pause momentarily to let the silence wash over me. Not for the first time, I congratulate myself on my forethought of buying such a remote place in which to live. I like the solitude and peace, and this is the perfect setting for one such as me. On unlocking the vehicle, I have a quick scan of the interior to make sure everything is where it should be. Satisfied that everything is as I need it to be, I sit in the driver's seat and turn the ignition on. My expectation levels rise again. Tonight's the night. I've been driving around town for over an hour trying to find a parking space. Why is there never one available when you really want one? I'm in danger of falling behind schedule. It is amazing how quickly things can change. Just a few hours ago I had plenty of time. But now, with all this difficulty, it's all getting very tedious. Then, finally, I find one. It is not perfect, but in the circumstances, it will do. I lock the vehicle and turn and walk away, checking my mobile as I do. I'm not as late as I thought I was, so that provides a little comfort. I settle into my stride and head for the town centre. It's only minutes away. I ignore the shop fronts that I pass. They hold no interest for me. The town is lit up like a Christmas tree, although it isn't that time of year, but there are lights everywhere. I approach the club entrance, the two doormen giving me the evil eye. After passing through the lobby, I am then at once confronted by the sudden darkness of the interior. As I enter this twilight world, I begin scanning, checking the proliferation of opportunities on display and offer. I've had a good feeling about tonight all week, and I just know that I'm going to strike gold. This is going to be my lucky night, and I find the one. I promenade through the club, both floors, searching through the whole interior. As I search, I come upon secluded alcoves, nooks and crannies, 
and investigate these as well. They cover every square metre of the place, so I get a full picture of what is available. I look, I glance, I study. There is nothing that grabs my attention. Maybe I'm being too picky. I tell myself it's early days yet. Be patient. I stand at one of the bars for a moment. There is a seething mass of humanity clamouring for refreshment, and the bar staff are working like Trojans. I grow tired of the lack of manners and impatience and walk away. I make my way up to the next floor and find another bar tucked away around the corner. I lean against the pillar and just watch. Then I see her. My heart leaps and my yearning soars. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sure my eyes sparkle like diamonds. She is in the clubber. She is working behind this bar. She's tall, maybe 5'9", slim and sleek. She has long curly brunette hair that tumbles down her shoulders and halfway down the length of her back. Even as I watch, she gathers it all up and puts it into a ponytail. She has a wonderfully symmetrical face with eyes that sparkle and shine, though I'm not close enough to discover the colour. I continue to look at this vision of beauty, of poise, of possibility. She had appeared moments ago from the door at the back of the bar. She prays herself down the bar towards my position, and her eyes meet. I hold her gaze, and it is at this moment that I know. She passes by me and serves a customer to my left. I remain steadfast in my attention, letting her know that I'm in for the long haul and won't let her go. I take in every detail about her, absorbing her physicality like a sponge. She continues to serve the customers, and I have a word with myself. I need to understand she has a job to do, and cannot spend time sharing the nuances with me. With that in mind, after 20 minutes I walk away. I seek out a sheltered recess where I can collect myself, and consider how I am going to play this. This takes more time than I have envisaged, and it is 30 minutes later that I find a vacant carani. I take a seat, and begin to conjugate on how to bring this potentially wondrous night to its ultimate climax. Unlike the other members of staff, she didn't appear to have a badge, so I have no idea of her name. For the moment I refer to her as Tulip. I glow with the recognition that with one glance between us we have exchanged a lifetime of meaning and possibility. I feed on conjured images of Tulip, and what the hours after she finishes here will bring. When I introduce myself to her later, I will love her to take the initiative, and so take my breath away by her audacious, an unexpected move on her part. This prospect of that teases and tantalises me, and then I imagine how marvellous it would be if that continued in the same vein throughout our time together. No, no, that was too much. I mustn't push this expectation on our young shoulders, for fear of being let down and disappointed again. But there had been something in her eyes, a promise, a vow. Maybe that this time I could count on her, that I wouldn't be disappointed. Her eyes had beckoned me, bid me de enter and I needed no second asking. There had been warmth, a tenderness in them, as though we had known each other for an age. There was an anticipatory soothing in each other's presence, and words were superfluous on a period of enforced silence, such as the current one was taking place between us. It was the chemistry that would set us apart from others, the blurring of our own individual boundaries as we welded together. I would be a bandage to her wounds, and she would be the answer to my prayers. There had been an enticing smile on her face as she passed me and went to serve the customer beyond me. That, for me, was key. The final telltale sign that we had connected. A vow that she would never break. That smile, just for me, and she would never fake. We were two lonely people being brought together by happenstance. Whatever magic this was, it was meant to be. My heart was aflame, and I knew that hers would be too. I could not and would not let this opportunity pass us by and allow the moment to escape, never to be recaptured. It is amazing how quickly three hours can pass when you have someone on your mind. The club was slowly emptying, and the number of people on both floors was dwindling. I stood up, and though enchantly sauntered towards the bar. She had her back to me, and seemed to be telling up. I smiled, reveling in the possibility she had. I didn't want to disturb her while she concentrated so I made my way to the pillar off to one side, and leaned up against it, watching her every move. She pressed the tabs in the till, and the cash register clicked in the action. She tore a piece of the till receipt and put it next to the machine, then removed the notes and began counting them. She then did the same with the silver. After she had finished counting, 
She clacked the roll of cash up and disappeared through the door at the back of the bar, totally focused on what she was doing. I was disappointed that she didn't just turn and give me a slight glance, perhaps a smile, some sign that she hadn't forgotten about me. No matter. I pushed off from the pillar as the door people began encouraging people to leave and made my way slowly down the stairs, not wanting to attract too much attention to myself by being annoying and hanging around. As I appeared into the night, I had already staked out where I was going to wait for her. I walked nonchalantly without crushing towards a shop doorway to my left. It was four shops away from the club and I had earlier cased the surrounding area. I do like to be repaired. There were small groups of punters outside the club, others taking off for home, but they paid scant attention to me. I reached the doorway and inspected its seclusive properties and ease of viewing. Nestling in, I looked to the left towards the club entrance. It was perfect. I knew that I might have up to an hour before she appeared from the building, so now I left the doorway and walked further away from the club. Now I began to look at shop fronts, although not with any great enthusiasm or interest. I walked casually glancing into windows before moving on to the next one. I turned round at every junction, and eventually I found myself in the road where I parked my vehicle. There are far less people about now. I unlocked the door and changed my clothes, so I can welcome her in a proper, gentlemanly way. I inspect the interior for the last time, comfortable in the knowledge that all is arranged. I casually return to the secluded shop doorway in such a way that no CCTV picks up my movements. I conduct myself back into my hideaway, using the shadows to helpful effect. My dark one-piece suit is an effective camouflage. I want her to be surprised, and yet relieved at my sudden appearance when she probably believed that I'd forsaken her and gone home. This I know would have left her feeling disappointed. I tuck myself into the doorway and wait. As time passes, stragglers wander by, to remain still and blend into the dark. I stay oblivious to my presence. Twenty minutes later, a side door to the club slowly opens, and three members of staff appear. One of them is the object of my desire. My heart skips a beat, and my breathing becomes ragged. I rein my appetite in. I tell myself I have all night long. Still, I yearn to touch her, to feel her, to make her mine. The three come to a halt outside the main entrance and have a chat. Then they split up. One girl turns in my direction, and my love and another turn to the right, walking away from me. I shuffle forward to get a clearer view before retreating. After the other girl passes me by, I quietly slip out. I keep her in sight all the time as I pursue her on the other side of the road. I keep to the shadows, and as I turn around a bend, I walk a little more briskly. I hear laughter filtering back towards me. I smile at her being so chill and full of life. As I approach the twist in the road, I slow my pace. This is just as well, because the two girls have come to a halt. They're having a chat. I spy an alleyway a little way off and move towards it. The girls say goodnight to each other. My girl turns to the left, and the other to the right. I appear from the alley and follow meters from her back. She is dawdling, engrossed in her mobile oblivious to my inadvertent approach. I accelerate, gradually drawing level to the left of her. I take a quick glance behind me. Nothing. I look to my right at this vision. Hello, I say quietly. She lifts her head and turns, looking straight at me. Her mouth opens. I smile. God, I want to taste those lips. As I look at her for those split seconds, I know I have chosen well. She will fulfill my fantasies and desires with a plum. I know it. I move towards her, humming a tune. Something smashes to the pavement. We start an erotic embracing dance. And she is everything I knew she would be. I love this song. Sinatra's version best of all. It couldn't be any other. It speaks to me. It tells me exactly what must be done. The dance doesn't last long, much to my disappointment. But at least we had a quick twirl. As the dance ends, I'm singing the lyrics quietly to myself as I unlock the vehicle door. Doobie. Well, we hope that you enjoyed our latest horrific tale. If you want to keep up to date with future episodes, then subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our social media pages. 
You can also give the channel support by visiting our merchandise store and picking up some of our items. Please also take a moment to support our contributing artists who very kindly lend their talents to the show. Check out the links in the description how you can do this. Well, that just leaves me to say, until next time my friends, keep it creepy, keep it horrific. <laughs>